Hey YouTube, how's it going? It's Quentin here and welcome back to tutorial number 14. And in this tutorial, I want to carry on talking to you guys about arrays. So, in the last tutorial, I showed you guys one way to declare an array, which was uh, this line over here. And then I also showed you guys how to access each individual element inside of an array by typing the array name and then two little brackets, square brackets and the array element number in between those square brackets. Okay, but let's just uh, delete this line for a second and I want to concentrate on this line over here. So do you see how I declared my array which was uh, this part over here and then I added in five different values inside of the parentheses which was this part over here okay this is called declaring and initializing an array but there are times where I don't know when I'm declaring my array what these values are going to be okay like let's say I wanted to ask the user what his five top favorite cars are or her five top favorite cars. I don't know what he or she is going to fill in. But what I do know is that I only want to set aside five spaces so that they only fill in five cars. Okay. So what I can do is I can declare my array just like that. But inside these parentheses, I'll just add in the number five. Now this tells JavaScript, okay, I'm only leaving five spaces in my array and when the user is finished with those five spaces then that's it okay so that's how we declare an, uh, an array with a certain number of spaces in the array now what we can do is we've got these five spaces to fill so let's say I've asked the user to fill in his five favorite cars now what I have to do is I have to assign each of those values to an array element using the array index okay so the array index was this thing uh, the array name and then the square brackets okay so our first array index starts at zero if you guys can remember and then we go on from there so our first array index car zero well let's say the user said his favorite car was a Ferrari okay then we can go ahead and fill that in like that okay now what I want to do is I'm gonna duplicate this line five times because we're gonna fill in the rest of the elements so I'm just gonna put my cursor right here in front of the line and then I'm gonna push control D on my keyboard and that duplicates that line. So that was uh, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so we've got five different lines here. So we start at array index one, okay, zero, one, two, three, four. Okay, cool. So the next thing I want you guys to notice is that array index five never appears in our array because we've set aside five spaces but we started counting at zero so we went zero one two three four and that means our five spaces are filled so cars five is never going to be an element in our array as long as we only have five spaces okay so let's go ahead and just carry on filling in some values here and uh, we can say maybe his second favorite car was a Porsche and his third favorite car was uh, McLaren and his fourth favorite car we could probably just say is a Mercedes and then of course because I woke up in a new Bugatti we'll just put Bugatti over here and one does not simply wake up in a new Bugatti, so I don't know how that dude did that, but anyways, cool. So now we've 
declared our array with five spaces and we filled all five spaces with this code over here. Now what we can do is we can just treat this array as normal and I showed you guys how to print out a full array. Then I also showed you guys how to print out each individual element in an array that was all in the previous tutorial. So that's, uh, you guys know how to do that. And uh, yeah, basically we've, we've just learned how to declare an array in a different way, okay? But there's actually still one other way that we can declare our array. So you see how, I'm actually just gonna delete this quickly. Control X. Okay, you see how we've set aside five spaces in our array. But what happens if we don't want to limit the user to only five spaces? Let's say we were asking the user to fill in any brand of car that they decided they wanted to buy or they were interested in buying, okay? Then maybe we don't want him to just give us a list of five. Maybe we can have a list of 10 or eight or 12. We don't know how many cars the user might wanna give us a list of, okay? What we can do is then start off with an empty array. So you just go ahead and say uh, var cars equals new array and you don't fill anything in on the parentheses. Now that means we have an empty array. So there aren't, there isn't even one element in our array as our code starts off, there's nothing there. Now what we can do is, uh, if I paste this back in, we can start filling up some spaces. So when JavaScript reaches this line of code, it goes, oh, okay, you wanna put an element inside of this array? Okay, well now there's one element in the array. Then it gets to this line of code and says, oh, you wanna put another element in the array? Okay, well now our array is two elements long. And then it gets the next one, three, four, five. Okay, so now we'd have five elements in our array, but like I said, it doesn't matter actually how many we've got here. So uh, I could duplicate that line again and have six if I wanted to, and uh, I guess we could probably just uh, put in BMW or something over there. Cool, and we could carry on going uh, for as long as we wanted, and our array would just keep adding a new element every time. Okay, so that's pretty cool. But then how do we know how many elements that we have or inside of our array? Like, how can we keep track of that? Well, there is actually something called a property which we have with our array. And uh, the only property we actually have when uh, working with arrays is the length property, which basically counts how many elements there are inside of our array. Okay, so to make use of this length property, what we can do is we just type in our array name and then we put in a full stop and then we type the word length. Okay, and that's how to use the length property with an array. So now what I can do is I can actually uh, print out how many elements we have inside of our cars array by just uh, typing document dot write and inside here I can put cars dot length okay so this is our array name plus dot length on the end of it and what that does is it'll print out however many elements we have inside of our array. So let's go ahead and save this. And when I run this in Firefox, you can see we now have the value six printed out on the screen. And that means that we have six elements in our array. And to double check that, we can actually just go back here and we can go one, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm right, or JavaScript is right. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Okay, so let's recap what we've done here for a second, okay? We've learned a new way to declare arrays. Then we've also learned a new way to insert values into our array. And then we also learned uh, how to count or how to keep track of how many elements there are inside of our array.
by using the length property. And uh, that's pretty much all I have for you guys in this video. So I'm just going to close off with a quick choke. And now that you guys have learned about arrays, you'll finally understand this because I've been dying to share this joke. And uh, basically, why did the programmer quit his job? Because he didn't get a raise. Ha ha, I cracked myself up. Ha ha, so funny. But anyways, uh, thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to like my video. And please don't forget to visit my forum if you want any of this code in the tutorial. So thanks for watching and I will see you guys next time.